Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and today look at this gorgeous start. Mmm, tasty, it's a plains hills, we've got geothermal fissures, we've got rainforest, we've got bananas, we've got diamonds, we've even got mountains, it's just what a start. We can only be playing as Georgia, a Civ that traditionally gets a little bit of a bad reputation amongst the Civ 6 community. I personally believe it is incredibly unfair and if you get the hang of Georgia they can be incredibly powerful. Very powerful in fact, they're just a little bit strange. We're going to be using them to show off Georgia's amazing ability to become a religious and diplomatic powerhouse. Using my religion to get extra envoys with city-states, to be able to produce more diplomatic favour, to get more tourism, to be able to really racket up the faith game. They are incredibly effective as a sieve. Now showing off Georgia as a general game was an idea given to me by my amazing channel supporters on Coffee and Patreon. Remember, I do have a Coffee and a Patreon if you want to support the channel and help me to basically get stuff like this out at the rate I do. It really, really helps. Thank you everyone that does support. And that is the place to go if you do have an idea for any of the upcoming civs, but without going into admin too much, we're going to dive straight into this game. To start with, I have a tile on a river on a plains hill. You really can't get much better than that. I'm also right next to a 5-2 tile. I have another 5-2 tile there. I've actually got a 6 yield tile on the border as well. There are some amazing tiles to pick up from the beginning of the game. This is awesome. So broadly speaking, I believe that I probably could move myself a little bit but I'm gonna just settle in place for now. Even get a nice boost towards foreign trade. There is the continent split. Unfortunately, I didn't get any extra era score for finding or settling on a new continent. Every now and then you do. It seems to be a little bit randomly generated as to which order of the game puts you in, but never mind. First up, Astrology. I want to rush my holy site districts and I want to rush my religion. As well as, actually, there is a Stonehenge possibility on this map. Right there. Now it's next to a stone, it's on a flat tile, it would give me an instant religion. I also have a lot of things that I could chop, an awful lot of things that I could chop. So a Magna start actually doesn't sound too bad. If I'm going to settle far and wide, and settling with Georgia is very much something you want to do. Any game with faith, you want to get as many cities out as possible. They don't need to be particularly big, you just need the quantity. And that's because I need as many copies as my Renaissance wall as I can get, and I need as many copies of my holy site as I can get. Big cities don't matter this game. So Magnus really helps with that. I could combine it with mining and bronze working to chop down a lot of these tiles, rush out a government plaza and rush out a bunch of cities. I actually think that would be very handy. Oh, I meant to say the details of this map, by the way, we're playing a seven seas script with all of the settings left alone and I have no mods in this game whatsoever as well as no game modes. This is pure, unadulterated, funky Civ 6. Because it's seven seas and there's a lot of land to go and explore in theory, I believe a scout is going to go well. Also, when you've got a 3-2 tile like this and you're on a plains hill, the ultimate starting location, it means if you build a scout, you get two pop at the same time. So that is quite a nice little adjacency there. Now I chose to go up through the mountains to see what was the other side. And I believe, unfortunately, this could be a bit of a dead end. Although, if this is a lake or a sea, what's this one? It is coast, so the land might run out. I'm not entirely sure. Nope, there is another land bridge there. Actually, that would be a good canal city if that is two of the seven seas. By the way, this is a small map, six player map with six people in. I literally have left the settings kind of alone today. Straight into Settler. I'm also now working this geothermal fissure tile. That's a good thing. The extra science means that I rush astrology even quicker. I can get Stonehenge or a holy site or whatever out immediately. That is another population. That's even better still. Oh, delicious. Actually, well, as soon as I've got 50 gold, I'm going to be buying this other 3-2 tile in order to really get my capital working fast. Looks like there's tobacco. It looks like there is more fresh water up here for me to go and settle. Another couple of rivers. So my settler should actually have some decent spaces available to me. And I'm going to take it off the geothermal fissure, work that banana tile. Yeah, I think that's the thing to do. There you go. Look, the settler actually is going to be finished the turn after I get to four pop. That's actually not a bad outcome. That means the city should flip back to four pop pretty quickly after getting that out. 
Now the gamble is whether or not I now switch from astrology and hope that I can get a natural wonder. I'm just looking at the appeal lens and alas, it doesn't look like there's any distinct signs that there could be a natural wonder near me. So it's a bit of a gamble that. Am I gonna find a natural wonder in six turns? For me, I would rather take the gamble because I want to go mining into bronze working. Now that'll allow me to chop out things around my capital nice and quickly, should we choose to. I can also get these diamonds going as well. I found a city state and I'm thirst to find it. That's always a good thing. Again, I'm just continually scouting the appeal tile, hoping that I find something. It looks like there's nothing more in that direction on the continent either. South might be the way to go from here. It's always worth having a look around city states as well. They tend to sometimes spawn on top of natural wonders. There's discipline. There's already a barb encampment that's spawned up there. And there is the Cree. The Cree are pretty peaceful as neighbors go. Exchanging capital information means that I can see that they're just over there. So actually this is more competitive settling ground than I would have hoped. I don't want to play particularly aggressive this game. Georgia can get pretty aggressive with my mana arm rush, very effective as a unit. But if I can avoid it, I kind of would like that. I'm just going to rush craftsmanship. I want to go that into state workforce because I really want the government plaza up and running as quickly as I can get it. Well, they denounced me immediately because, you know, there was no point in trying otherwise, but that's not, it's not the worst outcome really. So I've got the settle out to start with. I'm gonna go and settle up towards these mountains again. There are some nice areas around. I haven't found though any natural wonders so far at all. I have to keep going to explore. I really, really, really want to find one. Gonna rush out a second scout though so I can go and see if I can find what's directly below me. Looks like there may be more land. We might be able to have a little bit of fun exploring in that direction. There's also another city state over to my left behind that mountain range. My gamble on astrology hasn't really paid off. I think I might have to go and hard research it, unfortunately, which is a bit of annoyance, but what are you gonna do? It's fine. There's our Mar, and no one's met them, so that's another faith per turn. Brilliant. And now that this scout is finished, I want to build something that astrology is going to come into nicely. So I'm actually going to go for a slinger and then go holy sight or Stonehenge into there. I don't know. So far, we're, we could go either way on that one. There is Antavaravaravamo. Lovely. Someone has met them. Okay, so we're, there is somebody else in this direction. City number two is now down. I get a little bit of era score for settling near a mountain that is flaming and smoking. That's not very fun. And I'm going to put a couple of turns of production into getting a builder up. So there's a lot of land to myself, a huge amount of land to myself. I do need to probably go and settle up to my north to stop the Cree from taking all of that. But for now, this is okay. There's astrology anyway. So yeah, we kind of gambled on getting a natural wonder. It didn't happen, but that's okay. You know what? We are going to gamble. We're going to go and try and put Stonehenge down. Now, if this gets stolen from me, I will use my production to put down a holy site immediately and we can get the religion that way. So it's not the end of the world, but I would quite like to see if we can rush it. That would be cool. Oh, don't you hate it when you get blocked by troops that are technically neutral? It's like Armar knows what it's doing. My scout can't get through. Oh, Ooh, that's a lot of barbs. I'm also being chased in the other direction here. This scout may already be at a premature end. If I, like, I might be able to run around. Sometimes the spearmen won't come out of the encampment. A lot of the time it will. Yep, it most certainly did. So I'm going to move on to that hill. Oh, yep, that scout is totally kaput. Well, Never mind, what are you going to do? I'm actually going to finish the builder in my second city rather than getting a holy site. I think if we just do this, I might be able to get some bronze working out and then rush a couple of chops in that city to start with. Now, goodbye, scout. Goodbye. You found nothing but death. Oh, mega colossal eruption right next to my second city. So that's already lost a population. Unfortunately, I think it might have also gotten rid of a lot of the woods and the rainforest around, which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, all of them. So I can't chop those anymore, but the yields on the tiles around are pretty awesome. And if I improve that tile, that is an error score for me. So that'll be cool as well. And let's go state workforce. You know what? Actually, I do want to get that specialty district down quick. So maybe I do want to rush a holy site. I'm going to get enough gold soon to just insta buy a builder. So maybe that's not a bad idea. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to just try and rush it through. I think state workforce would take a good benefit from doing that. Now we have a pantheon and I really want to get something that's going to feed well into my strategy here. Monuments of the Gods means that I could rush Stonehenge even quicker. That would be quite good. Extra production towards classical and ancient era wonders. Divine Spark also gives me the ability to get more points when I get my holy site down. So that's a cool thing. Fertility Rites lets me get a free builder 
in my capital. Now that would mean that I've got a higher growth rate, which is awesome, but it also gives me effectively three chops in my capital that I can use to rush the wonder out. So a little bit of instant benefit and then some city growth for the rest of the game. City growth is always good. The more population you have, the more tiles you work, the quicker you can get the walls up. It's all about religion and it's all about walls this game. Actually, yeah, fertility rights. We're going to go for it. I'm going to take that growth and we're going to take the three builder and I'm going to use that to get myself a mine on that diamond and to chop out this forest just to give me a little boost on Stonehenge. Typically, we've just met Gaul. Hey, we haven't seen Gaul in a while, have we? <laughs> Oh dear, do they like me any anymore? Minus nine, no, they, they've already started on minus nine. It's gonna be one of those games where the AI just really doesn't want to like me. There's Cleopatra though. So Egypt, only two more, and we will meet everyone in the game so far. And Egypt actually only has minus two. So I'm gonna send her a delegation and hope that we can get friendship going. She also might be a good option for us if we ever did want to go for a joint war on Poundmaker. Not that I particularly want war, but she might come to our aid and attack from the other direction. Uh, the barbs already are going to be problematic here. So I'm going to get this gem out. I'm going to immediately see if I can sell the gems. I can. Gaul will give me all the gold up front. And that's good because that means I've now got the gold that I can be looking to get some infrastructure with. So I can even get a monument to up my culture per turn. I can get a second builder to try and rush some era score. Or I can save myself for a settler. I think both are good options here, but I'm gonna go for the builder. We can get these two cities working fine and happy. I think this should be pretty decent. Now they're gonna attack my slinger. I'm gonna to have to retreat back to my capital, but that's okay. We don't mind that. We're gonna do a little bit of damage and stop them from getting there. I'm also gonna potentially chop down that wood if I can get the time. Depends if they just charge in. They're probably going to just charge in knowing my luck. I am just a little bit concerned though because Egypt is building Stonehenge and that's what I wanted to do. So I might have to sacrifice my builder here briefly in order to get a little bit of chop so that I can rush Stonehenge. I just don't trust this to be, I mean, it's very difficult with Stonehenge to see which one is winning, but I feel like I've got one, two, three, four monuments with stone on them and Egypt has five. So I think they're ahead. So I might have to actually lose this wood tile and lose the builder. Yeah, this is where the Pantheon comes into play in order to chop that and give myself an extra couple of turns. And I'll put myself in production focus just to take a, another tile off. Yeah, I think I mean, there's no, no choice really. I'm gonna have to just take that. I'm gonna have to move my slinger in. I'm gonna lose the builder, but hopefully, hopefully now you can see that this is looking good. I've gone from kind of like, ooh, I'd say like half nine, on the clock to six o'clock. Let's have a quick look. Oh, that's close. That is so close. I, oh, but it's very close. I don't know. Yeah, look at that. Egypt's building it so much quicker. They've now completed the ring. Oh, that is so frustrating. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to go for Stonehenge. And unfortunately, that means that I believe, I believe they're probably gonna go feed the world, which is very much what I was going to do this game. Maybe they'll go choral music. You never know. You can only try these things. You can only try these things. Even too far away in order to, attempt to go and like declare war and stand on the tile otherwise that's exactly what I would go and do but alas not to be yeah look the ring is now almost complete the ring is now on the she's even building the inner ring of stone yeah oh bleh, bleh. yeah there it is never mind so turn 35 ugh, I feel like if we had rushed yeah if we'd gone from the beginning and we'd rushed Stonehenge by not skipping around when we did on, where was it, astrology. I feel like we could have got that. And I really, really want it. I really, really want it. They have the choral music. They haven't gone for Feed the World. Hmm. Can we take Egypt on and steal Stonehenge? I'm actually going to load up a safe file. We're going to try this again. I think if we, if we optimize this a little bit more and I don't faff around for those turns, I think we can get this done. So that's what we're going to do. So yeah, we're going to speed run this. Effectively, what I'm going to do is kind of play this exactly the same as we did before. I don't want to cheese it too much, but we're going to just manually do astrology as much as we can. Scout into Settler, same as we did before. But this time, we will probably see if we can get Stonehenge. I think it's possible. I think it's possible. And I think it's worth going for it if we can. I'm hoping the game should run pretty much exactly the same as it did. No early empires. We actually don't have the population this time. If anything, this game is going to be slightly worse than the previous one. But, you know, but what, what can you do? You know what? In fact, okay, I'm going to go for a second scout. We're going to change the way we play this. 
ever so slightly and I'm going to move into a settler from there. There is said scout, we'll send him in the other direction and then we'll go for the settler into astrology. We're rushing this now. There is the city state that gives me culture. There was another faith city state that I need for the pantheon. There is the Cree as we met them before. We can sample their hospitality this time rather than giving away my own uh, city which is quite fun. Now one tactic by the way with Georgia is to go killing barbarians and also uh, basically in order to rush my pantheon but at the moment we're getting no luck because all of the barbs are kind of sat within encampments. I've actually let that scout probably could have been nipped if we'd been quicker but what you gonna do? But Georgia do get faith when you get kills. It is very handy and is something that you absolutely can see if you can exploit as a mechanism craftsmanship. We're going to do it again. We're going to rush four wonders. I think it's the best policy for us. And again, we've gone to three pop now. So I'm going to rush that banana towel, make sure that we're going in tastily. There is astrology. Okay, so we got that. I do want to finish the settler, but I guess it doesn't matter particularly if I get the settler now. If I just rush Stonehenge, I keep the population. We get a couple of extra turns in on it. This could be good. I just need to get myself a builder now. If I can find any tribal hut that gives me a builder, that would be uh, a very, very handy thing. There is a tribal hut there as I as I say that. Yeah, I didn't actually remember the turn that Egypt finished Stonehenge. Was it like 34, 35, something like that? We'll aim for that. We'll see if we can get it by that point. There's an envoy. Interesting. Well, hang on to that. That could be useful later. There's our mark. There is the extra envoy there. Perfect. And we've now got ourselves. They, they want a profit. They want a government plaza. But we've now got the extra faith per turn so we can rush in my pantheon nice and quick now. Recon unit as a tribal hut bonus. I think that's probably the worst one. Oh, there is actually land in this direction as well. Goodness me, I love these Seven Seas maps. They are just so interesting. The Cree have decided to be my friend this game. It's, it's random the RNG in Civ sometimes. When you actually see it get played out, it's really, really odd how different certain games can look. There is Egypt, by the way. Keep an eye. Keep an eye. This is where they were building Stonehenge last time and it popped up quite quick. I'm going to stick my envoy down into candy so I can get myself that extra faith per turn. It means I can actually switch off my pantheon and go for urban planning to give myself a little bit of extra production on Stonehenge. I think that's worth it. I think I've gone a slightly different direction this time. I haven't found the other city step. I think I've got to curve back up to find it and Gaul. I don't want to go, I was trying not to go too off piste but it's a little bit tricky. You can never remember exactly where you went in any given circumstance. Well, there's mining. We'll go for bronze working, see if I can rush that through. I'd love it if I can chop my rainforest down, that'd be lovely. There it is. There it is, turn 25. So they, I think it's going to be about turn 35. It's going to be really close, actually. Really close as to whether we get this or not. Nope, nope. One of the seas is in the way, so we really can't go this way. Fair play. Well, we'll just, we'll just see if we can rush in this direction. And this is a little peninsula as well. This is a strange old map. I love it. Really cool. So they are, they've got two tops on at the moment, but I've got all five and I'm building the ring. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. And also there is kind of the unsaid thing where I'm going to be effectively just rushing and potentially ruining my early game here in order to get myself a wonder that may or may not be super useful, but it's become a personal challenge for me at this point. And you know, once you get challenged, you have to, you have to take these things on. All right, here is the Pantheon. I think I can still go for Builder. The Settler option isn't there anymore. So we're gonna go for Builder for all of the logical reasons we said before. There is the Builder. I should be able to chop this out next turn and make sure that I get Stonehenge. I may not even need the chop, but honestly, we're just gonna go for it. I don't wanna say that I left anything on the table, you know? So what have we got? We've got the inner circles being made, the outer circles kind of there now. Oh yeah, that's so, oh, so close. We're still a little ahead, but they are catching me at a venomous speed. So there is Stonehenge. Wow, we had to focus on that, but we've got it. There's our early game religion. You can see it being built. I do love it. When you get a start like I've got with all those chops, you kind of have to look at it and go, you know what? Yes, yes, we will treat ourselves to something that delicious. There is the first great profit. So I get some error score for that and let's make the first religion. Georgia is all about staying strong, throwing walls up generally and making sure that we can get as much diplomatic favor as possible. For Georgia, 
Feed the World works amazingly well because it forces you to get those holy sites going, forces you to get the food and the housing to get those extra walls up and especially if you're throwing your cities into really concentrated small areas like we plan on doing, actually having Feed the World massively benefits from that because it means that you can build those cities up a little bit better than you would normally be able to. We will be going Pagoda but I think for now I'm actually going to take another thing which is Papal Primacy. Now this gives me 200 religious pressure to a city-state when I put an envoy with them. That combined with George's ability to get double envoys with any city-state that follows my religion means that we can start spreading my religion around nicely. The best ways of doing this is to get the three envoys from all of the quests. Now you will have seen I just got an envoy with Armar for, uh, because of the great profit, but alas, that was before I got the religion, so I didn't get any spread that time. But if I were to, for instance, build now a government plaza, I would get that bonus. Egypt will not like me now. I beat them to a wonder. They don't like the fact that I don't have a military. Everything's really going wrong for Cleopatra right now. She's like, I thought you were pretty chill. And we're like, nah, sorry. Turns out we were jerks the whole time. The game has really not had a huge amount of tribal huts though. Considering how much land I've explored, I've, I've managed to find drastically little. There's the holy set. And this is a nice plus four. And I don't need to majorly, you know, push on getting crazy adjacency holy sites but I would quite like to boost them as much as I can. Extra faith is always good and there is my extra gold from the early game gems. I'm going to sell those off, get myself a little bit more gold to get some infrastructure up. If I can rush a shrine up or get another builder that would be good. Look at these geothermals up there. It's a nice double source of them. That holy site, by the way, will give me three era score because it is a stunning one with plus four adjacency. I would like to see if we can get a golden edge. There was the fountain of youth. We did actually have it right next to my city. Look at that. That was within 12 tiles. So we could have even rushed astrology quicker than we ended up doing. Oh, it's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind. What are you going to do? What are you gonna do? We'll just have to accept that it is what it is. Masonry boosted with that last charge of the stone. That's looking pretty good for me. I'd love state workforce. I'd love to get that down relatively soon. I need to kill a few barbs in order to get bronze working as well. Did I just see that the era scores? Yeah, it's slowly starting to come away now. I will get the era score for settling next to, uh, look at that, actually, <laughs> floodable river and also volcano in one settle. So there's the flood plain, there's the volcano. I only need six era score and I'm about to pick up one we're going to meet Gaul. I'm gonna get three for finishing the holy site as soon as this barb actually you know decides to sod off which may be tough may be tough to get rid of them okay I would like it oh I, I don't know why I didn't stay to chat there never mind 20 turns uh 20 20 era score sorry and we need to get five more I've, I've in theory two more people out there we could do that if I got another envoy with Armar that would be handy as well that would mean that I was suzerain on that city state there's a tribal hut Actually, that is also another source of error score. It's amazing that we forgot about tribal huts because we've been so unlucky with them. I was just like, what are tribal huts again? I'm not sure. There's three error score. First governor is now also a thing. I could actually beeline for Armani, yes, and give myself some error score for becoming a suzerain of a city state. Where is a good target? Samarkand is not a bad one. Or we could go for this city state, which I can never pronounce. This one's probably looking pretty decent as well. So we'll pop it there. Amani will give me a bit more visibility and we should go in a good place from there. Lovely. And I believe, fingers crossed, that should be enough. Let's get this shrine quickly so I can get the extra food in my capital. The extra faith as well. I've got plus two faith because I've already had uh, one envoy in two different faith city states. So that's why I'm getting a plus two. Yep, the infrastructure in my city is doing pretty nice. I like it a lot. Urban planning is still a cool thing, but I will get builders so I can rush those up quickly. Discipline is looking decent as well. Okay, so yeah, again, we've got a nice little little solid base for us here. This is not too bad. And that was actually 60 faith as well. If I can rush temples, so we're going to go political philosophy and down to temples, I might be able to improve my religion before too many people get religions out. Egypt is going for religion after all. Sometimes if they go Stonehenge, you know, the AI had religion on their mind anyway. Oh, that scout, damn, that was a little bit of faith that I could have picked up there. Never mind. This is a good place to leave my scout, actually. What I've managed to do is stop the Kree from getting in and exploring my land too much. 
Uh, someone's got pyramids, it's always going to happen, pyramids is always a nicely competitive wonder that people love to get. I can't get past this hill annoyingly, move yourself and I'll, I will hopefully pick that up next turn. I'm actually, I've met up with the other end of Egypt's lands, unfortunately it means the tribal huts are probably not going to appear in great detail around here, but what can you do? Quickly, government plaza, pop down there, this will improve the holy site that I'm building, as well as giving me a couple of spaces with campuses in case I want Want to rush those later into the game. A little bit of science in any diplomacy or religion game is never a bad thing. It just helps you stay defensively relevant, aka you're not trying to hit barbs with paper mache guns, you know, you've actually got decent military infrastructure. And there's the first suzerain with this city state, explores a little bit of the map for me and gets me into the golden age. We really, really wanted a golden age for Georgia because now we can make use of the fact that we can get a normal age bonus towards improving era score as well as golden age bonuses. It's just a combo that will not stop for the rest of the game. Golden age time. Wonderful for me. Just means I can actually settle reliably around my capital as well. Everyone else is in a golden age apart from Gaul who have gone normal. And this is the choice really where we go from between monumentality, so being able to purchase my settlers and my builders with the faith, and I've got good faith growth already, or whether we go for Exodus of the Evangelists. Now the advantage here is I get more faith full stop. It also means I get some apostles with a couple of bonus charges that I can use before I upgrade my religion. Now this is actually really handy. I also get plus two era score each time I convert a city to my founded religion. This is why Exodus actually beats monumentality for most Georgia games and that's what we're going to be doing. If I spread my religion I get two era score. Lovely. That is what we are going to be doing. Now I've got a missionary, that's good, but I'm not going to bother spreading my religion too early. I would like if it's all possible to get temples up first so that I can get my apostles. Apostles are a much better use of my faith than just missionary spamming. I'm just thinking actually, do I want to become suzerain of anybody else? Samarkand would be a good map reveal actually. So let's just move you across. We're gonna just keep skipping Amani everywhere in order to just do the usual thing of generating a bunch of extra stuff. And look, there we go. I just managed to get myself a government plaza. That gave me an envoy with this very difficult to pronounce city state and wibbly walls, my religion is now dominant there because of this lovely 200 pressure. That gives me two dedication era score bonus and means that every time now that I put a Sousa, uh, an envoy on this city state, as long as it follows my religion, I get a bonus envoy. It's brilliant. Next up, we rush ourselves Magnus into the capital. Let's get these settlers out. I need provision. I'd want to be able to pop that down as quickly as possible. I'm actually going to wait on this chop with my builder until Magnus is down and hopefully provision can be popped down at the same time so I don't lose a population in my capital. That would be awesome if we can get that going. Irrigation would be handy as well because we've got some bananas to improve on both of my cities actually. Rome. Rome, Rome, Rome. Again, it's funny how different sieves keep popping up from series to series, isn't it? We just did a Gaul Rome series and there we go. The Cree have decided to stop me from settling onto this little peninsula. That's a bit frustrating, but with my walls, they're going to find it very difficult to get through. And I can always encampment this tile to basically mean that the Cree could never even think about attacking me, even if they wanted to. Now the tribal heart was in this one. 120 gold. That's brilliant. We've almost picked up enough gold to put down a shrine in my second city almost instantaneously. That's quite handy as well. Granada, what do they want? Religious conversion. Haha. <laughs> now that is something that I can do for you. It's going to be amazing. Samarkand bows to Georgia. Good. I don't think, no. Unfortunately, Amani doesn't spread religion. That would be cool if the envoys that she gives also spreads religion. It'd be very difficult to code that one into the game, no doubt. So probably not a thing. But that's looking cool. I'm just going to quickly pick up a trader. This second city is going to be focusing on builders and infrastructure, whilst my capital does all the settling. Oh, frustratingly, ah, oh, the land ramps out. I was really hoping I'd be able to circumnavigate the globe. I think I've got far enough round actually because this warrior oh is getting shredded by a blizzard but oh no I might, I might I might just just miss out on being able to circumnavigate here I was thinking that would be a good uh, really good source of era score but no not to be did I survive did I survive nope it killed my warrior off oh that's frustrating the map is like, nope, my secrets will remain secrets. Okay, so this is the perfect combo. Watch this. I've got one turn left of the Sattler. Give Magnus provision. That means I don't lose the population when I get rid of the, or when I finish the Sattler. I put the 
colonization card in. That means I get 50% bonus towards settler production. Now Magnus is in, I also get 50% towards my chop from getting rid of this wood, which I now then chop to kick the settler out and immediately get another one out in four turns. That's pretty cool. Which way do I want to be settling? I've got really no competition on this bit of land, so I think I might go and settle towards Gaul briefly. Stop them from pinning me in too much. That would be quite handy, really. It should be worth pointing out, by the way, that I do play with an AI mod. It's called Real Strategy or something like that. It stops the AI from doing the Diplo favor glitch at the beginning of the game, where they value it really small, so you can just buy it for free effectively. So that is one thing I don't do on any of my runs. It's always worth pointing that out every now and then because I think people forget you see that glitch so often in the game that it's uh, it's tempting to believe that you have to do it but nope not every time just switching Amani over to Amar now as well Let's just keep her cycling around I want to get suzerain with as many city states as I can and keep that popping along as another settler to finish off there's another beautiful rainforest for me to chop with Magnus gives me seven population looks tasty and let's get myself the shrine in this city and look at that we're already up to 20 25 faith per turn. Actually, in order to pick up the whales and to get a city on the coast, how much are you going to settle on this little spit? It just helps to put some loyalty pressure on the Cree cities. If I can flip a couple of these cities, that would be very handy. Another tribal heart. New population. Oh, that's in my second city. That helps to push that up a little bit and get the population up and nice. Uh, I'm now going to rush construction. Actually, we'll go wheel construction so I can build a water mill first. But I love having lumber mills. I think they really add a lot of early game production to the game. Always worth picking them up. Now, here is the trader. Now, luckily, there are a couple of city-states that want to be traded with, but alas, none of them are going to be easy to get to. So I'm just going to send it from my capital first. It gives me just a nice route that puts a road through my land. I'm also going to go and settle on this desert. This does me a few things. It's on the coast. It means I can get another luxury as well as a strategic horse to sell. Uh, it gives me the inspiration, yep, for settling on the coast. And it's also on a desert, which means I get era score from that as well. All in all, very handy. In the meantime, let's start getting some builders out in my second city. We, we are beginning to get the infrastructure in now. I've got the faith per turn. I'm just waiting to pick up temples. There's Canada. We've met everyone. That should be five era score for meeting everybody first. Yep, world's first to meet everybody. Look at that. Lovely era score. You love to see it. City number three is down. Sailing is done and builder is the first thing for me to finish on that city. So I did just treat myself to a single missionary in Tbilisi because I realized that I bought myself a shrine in my second city and I haven't got my religion there just yet. So no extra food or housing. It wasn't really a problem until now because the city was pretty pretty good on growth up until that point, but it's worth picking it up now. Plus, you know, it means I can spread around to a couple of early city states. Oh, but did, oh no, not tornadoes again. Oh no, right, actually that's annoying. The gems have been taken, although I did get my gold up front for the gems, so that's not too bad. City number four. Now, I think Kutaisi is going to probably ancient wall it up pretty quickly. I build those quicker, 50% quicker, and there are barbs lurking in this sea. So we're just gonna see if we can get that done nice and fast. You settle too close. Really? Really? Hmm. Uh, I'll take the diplomacy favor. You know what? I'll, I, I, I don't mind if our relationship is based on a lie. I've already built the one, two, three, four cities around, so that's not a bad idea. Don't think tornadoes really improve fertility, do they? No, I was just looking at that spiraling around thinking, oh, I wonder if we'll get any yields out of that, but no. Alas, not to be. Anyway, here's the missionary. Wibbly walls. It spreads slowly. The Cree have got their religion up, but they got it through a golden age, and I haven't seen any holy sites being popped down just yet, so we may have a fairly decent religious contender. Egypt did get a religion, by the way, so this is a game where the AI is actually getting all of the things it should. So fingers crossed, that's all That's all good. We'll go Builder, we'll go Settler. I think, yeah, keeping Settlers in my capital. You know, actually, no, let's just get the Settlers out. Um, we've got Builders on the way as well. That's, that's all good. And here is my government. I'm not planning on going to war, so Classical Republic is always the best one. More Great People points is good, but the extra housing and amenity for every city with a district works amazingly well. We'll pick that up with the builder production 
I will go for Diplomatic League so that now I can put two envoys as one and Charismatic Leader. We're going to double up on these two. I would love it. Absolutely love it that we can start really throwing down the envoys now. Uh, and Monarchy, of course, is going to be the government I'm going for. So we're going to go towards Theology now. Get the envoys from Mysticism, Drama and Poetry, Theology. That'll give me two envoys, ability to build temples, like a lot of good stuff here. Wibbly Wars, by the way. Bam! It's another two era school. We're already up to normal age and we've got a minimum of 24 turns left. So that's looking uh, tasty. In the meantime, my missionary is now going to head towards this bank of city-states down here. If I can convert all them, that will be pretty handy for me. So off they go. And actually, Tbilisi will just temporarily pick up the Ancestral Hall. I'd love it if I got a builder every time I put a settler down. My goodness, that would save me a lot of hassle. Huge amount of hassle. One more city. This one is again near some marble as well as some iron. So that's good. I get a little bit of an era score. I mean, okay, I think I don't get the era score for settling on the floodable river because I'd already done it before. But I'm going to just get that holy site down nice and quick and we should be able to run pretty fast on that. Now, here we go. My envoy, I am going to pick up this city-state very quickly because I have my religion in this city, which means that I get two envoys. I will go from three to four and suddenly every building I complete gives me 10% culture back. Bam, as well as spreading my religion even further. So that's lovely. And this is where Georgia starts to steamroll into the diplomacy game. I've already got plus three points coming in per turn. Not a huge amount, but that will go up quick. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Dayboy91, Sean Critiz, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Emir EC, Henry, Rom 88, Radio Torre, and Private Selection Genoa Salami for all of your support as well as everybody that leaves comments and interacts with the channel generally. Thank you so much. See you all next time.